So none of this has diddly squat to do with an actual robot yet. None of this is cheap and none of this is easy, but this is one of those few times where I'm like, I get out of bed and I'm excited to go build the robot. Even though I know it's just going to be a giant, enormous pain in the butt for probably months. Yeah. You know, so let's, let's take on this life mission of building, you know, the robot that I'm not even going to make any money on this yet. You know, it could be a while before I see any payback on it. Is it worth it? I don't know. Mental health, I like it. You know, it's got to be worth something. All right, another beautiful day in paradise here, or in this case, the bus. <laughs> there was, when I first built the house, I didn't come over to the bus for weeks. And then one day I happened to walk over here and I'm like, you know what, I kind of like this still. So I'm going to probably set this up more for my work center over here. Um, robot building factory kind of thing. Anyway, I've been editing and uploading some videos here on the Mars Clipper Robots channel. Um, oh, side note on that. The channel originally was called Mars Clipper Dreadnought. Dreadnought was the name of the fictional spaceship that my character and uh, his best friend, the robot, uh, take off and go to Mars in. Um, recently, YouTube is in the process of creating what they're calling handles. And it's kind of like a nickname for your channel. And I thought, well, since I'm using the Mars Clipper channel for doing the robot stuff, in the future, you're going to start seeing Mars Clipper robots. Okay, so I just figured that wasn't taken. So let's go ahead and grab that. Okay, whatever. The last few videos and a few of the videos coming up, I'm not really showing actual robot hardware yet, uh, mainly because it doesn't exist. Uh, but I'm going through some kind of technology ideas, which is a fancy way of saying I'm figuring stuff out. So for instance, there's a video where I am testing 3D printing a sprocket to use with bicycle chains. Okay. Now that ended up not working very well. It was a pretty horrible idea, but it was something I really wanted to try out. Uh, mainly because if you remember, if, if any of you saw my last couple of years where I was trying to build a bicycle based, almost an ATV, um, the turtle project is what that was called. So I was, this was on the main channel on my carloncom.com channel. I've got a whole bunch of chains and bicycle parts left over. So taking that idea, I was like, well, I've got the wiper motors that I took off the bus. They turn at a constant speed. I've got two speeds on that, so I can run them. I think it's about 40 RPM and 60 RPM, if I remember right. I figure if the robot can do a walking speed, that's fine. That's like faster than the Mars, the real Mars rovers can go. They don't go anywhere near walking speed. Okay, so if I can get up to walking speed, I'm pretty happy. Okay, so I was starting to play around with like, okay, I, I used the bicycle chain idea and I gave myself a two to one gear reduction. Okay, that seemed useful. So I could say, let's go, you know, the motor could go its speed, I could gear reduce it to two to one, so then I'm going half speed, that gives me a little more torque. Um, also, I've got the electronic speed controller, so I can slow it down from that if I wanted to. You know, so I, but I was kind of going along. It's like, what I really need is test a motor on a wheel with some kind of simulated load and see is it even close. Okay, so a lot of the time I've been spending or wasting up until now is just trying to get a working prototype that I can start testing with. I mean, there's, you know, some really neat robot motors that are about $150 a motor. You should go buy it and plug it on, you know, hook up a wire, tie it to your, your Arduino or your Raspberry Pi. Boom, you're done. Okay. That is really nice. You know, maybe sometime in the future we can, we can have something like that. But I'm making a six wheel robot. So if I had $150 per wheel times six, whatever that works out to, you know, flash up the magic number. Uh, I didn't research that. I didn't write it down. So 
what I need to do right now is, okay, I've got two wiper motors off of the bus. I know how fast they turn. They've got a really good amount of torque. If that ends up working, I could go buy more. I've seen the wiper motors for, I think the cheapest I've seen them on eBay was about $25 a piece. Okay, so that's, that's one possibility. The other thing I'm looking at though is could I use a really inexpensive small motor with some kind of gear reduction? The robot isn't going to weigh very much and I'm not going to go climbing up any major hills. So if I know I only need to go three miles an hour walking speed, uh, could I use a fairly inexpensive motor to do that? Okay, so that's one of the things I'm testing. So I've spent a bunch of time uh, just happen to have some sitting here making gears on 3D printer. I'm looking, I mean, I've seen people do this, make a planetary gear setup. So you'd have a, you know, three planets, you know, this is the planet gear, here's the rain gear. Then you have a center sun gear. Uh, I don't know if this shows up, but that one didn't work very well. Okay. Had a printer setting problem. I think I've got the gears figured out. I just now got to dial in the printer a little bit better so that it makes really accurate parts. Uh, this was the first one I tried. This one was 96 teeth. This one is 48, half of that. But I realized the resolution on the printer, I ran into a limit there. Okay, so the printer just couldn't make small enough teeth accurately for what I needed. Okay, so I was like, oops. I thought, okay, if I made a 96 tooth sprocket and I think it went 96, 24, and 48. Okay, and I, I printed this one first. It's only five millimeters thick. And I realized, nope, that's not gonna work. Okay, I can't make small enough teeth on the printer I've got. Okay, so I came up with the next version. These teeth look a lot better. But then I ran into another settings problem, so I'm, di I'm dialing that out. Okay. And I had already printed this one. I had to print this to see if it meshed with this, and it doesn't quite. So none of this has diddly squat to do with an actual robot yet. This is, for instance, I talked about the CAD program. I'm using FreeCAD. I'm liking it, but it's nothing It's nothing at all like anything else I've ever done before. I've done some stuff with a program called Lightwave. That's a 3D animation program that lets you make 3D objects. And it actually can output a 3D file for printing, but it's not really a good designing program for actually making machines for real. None of this is cheap and none of this is easy, but this is one of those few times where I'm like, I get out of bed and I'm excited to go build the robot. Even though I know it's just going to be a giant, enormous pain in the butt for probably months. Yeah. You know, so let's, let's take on this life mission of building, you know, the robot that I'm not even going to make any money on this yet. You know, it could be a while before I see any payback on it. Is it worth it? I don't know. Mental health, I like it. You know, it's got to be worth something. You know, there's going to be a bunch of little videos that are, you know, 15, 20 minute videos that are going to come out of all these little pieces. You know, this doesn't look, I mean, it kind of looks like it's for the robot. But what I'm thinking, if I can take this and a little cheap motor that costs about $3 and come out the other side and drive that big wheel, maybe that'll work. If not, well, then I can just check that one off and say, okay, that didn't work for that. However, if I take the time to make the 3D printer do exactly what I need it to do, this could help me later. So it's still worth doing. It's just a matter of where does it fit. Okay. Um, you know, at first I want to drive the wheels. I got six wheels, so I got to get this thing to work six times. Okay. Once I get the first one to work, I should be able to just hit, you know, print and kick out the other five. So that's that's pretty straightforward, but I want to get the process figured out first. S after that, I'm going to have the cameras, which are going to be a combination of, I could use this camera that I have now. I could put a webcam on it. I've got 
I'm probably going to use Raspberry Pis, and so I've got several Raspberry Pi cameras, either the official one, I've got one official camera, and then I bought some cheaper ones that work, seem like they work about as well. They don't look as nice as this, but I could literally have multiples of those all over the robot. Um, the real Mars rover, they have a camera for every wheel so that if they're stuck from back on Earth, they can look at each wheel and make sure that it's not broken. Okay, that's worth having. I could also have on the Mars rover, it's got the little head on top that's got cameras and that can look around up and down. Um, if you have a robot arm that reaches out and picks something up, having a camera right on the end of the arm and so when you reach out and look down it sees the gripper and you could see okay I just want to move forward three inches and then down and then I got it okay so having multiple cameras would make sense if I took something like this and made it a smaller version I could take the motor that wasn't strong enough to move the wheel and I could have it control the gripper or I could have it control the little head that moved the camera around okay so you know having 11 matching motors that are too small to run the wheels they're still good for something so anything I do with this is probably going to work somewhere in the in the chain between where we are and where we want to be okay you can go on eBay and buy um, sets of metal gears for radio control cars okay um, so there's that, you know, going forward, when I figure out something I like, uh, the other example is, I don't have one over here, but the, the motors that are in my cordless tools, you can just go buy those, okay, um, without taking the tool apart, you just go buy another motor. Now, they have a lot of power, and I'm starting to realize if I have six motors driving six wheels, I don't need a motor that's as strong as a, as a cordless drill. That's way more power than I actually need. So that's why I'm kind of looking at the smaller ones. So I'm just trying to get a feel for how much do I need. I realized pretty early on that I'm my own worst enemy on this kind of stuff because I don't personally have the discipline or the coordination yet to really make good handmade parts. That's what I learned on the, on the bicycle project. You know, I could start off with pieces and weld them together, and they're all kind of crooked and stuff, and that just gets makes everything worse. But if I had the CNC make the parts, they should be pretty straight, and then I just bolt them together. So then I can use the strength of the system, and you know, I've got the mechanical ability to at least put things together. I'm just not good enough to. You know, I, I couldn't make one of these parts by myself, you know, by hand and, it, you know, make it work. I'm just not not that accurate. But the, the machine, it can do it. Once I get the settings, we're set. Okay, literally. So, that's what I'm looking at right now. We can take the parts that we have and grow to the next step. A um, couple random details, what I'm looking at right now. The the problem with the the 3D printed bicycle chain sprockets was more because the wheel itself that I bolted it to was crooked, and I didn't really fully appreciate how bad it was until I was looking at the video, and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I had no chance of that working. Also, I I didn't want to cut a new chain, and so I was using one of the old chains, and the chain had a little bit of a you know it's still kind of jammed up a little bit, so every once in a while it would it would work for a while, and then it would quit working and kind of get caught and just fall off. So. What I'm really thinking is I don't need a chain drive on the robot. Maybe later if I have a heavy duty system that I want to work, a chain drive would be worth doing. But for right now, it's not worth the problems. Uh, so I found a guy on eBay that was selling a whole bunch of O-ring belts, literally a rubber O-ring that they use for driving things. Some vacuum cleaners use them. Uh, I've seen little hobby uh, drill presses that use it. Um, so it's actually a pretty common thing. So it was funny because when I realized it, I'm like, oh, these are just like the O-rings I used to use when I worked on hydraulics. It's just used differently. Um, normally the O-ring, if you buy it as a belt, it's about $12 a piece. If you buy it as a hydraulic part, it's about 50 cents a piece. I'm like, oh, it's almost the same thing. So what I'm looking at is, in, you know, 
for driving the littler wheels, I'm just going to use these rubber belts and forget the chain drive. And possibly, instead of going down this route of making a planetary gear drive, this I have to have really close tolerance of, tolerances on. If they don't mesh perfectly, it's just not going to work. But I could have a little pulley driving a big pulley with a rubber belt between it, and then the big pulley could be hooked up to another little pulley that drives the next big pulley. So you go from like, you know, say 10 to 1 and then 10 to 1. So now you're at 1 to 100. Maybe you do that three or four times, and now you got a, a thing that goes from, you know, the little motor probably turns at 5,000 RPM, and I need 50 RPM. Okay, that's how we do it. You know, so if I can't make the planetary gear work, I'm going to go just straight to the rubber O-rings for now, and then that that will work better in the tolerance range that I have. After that, then we go buy proper gear motors, but they cost money, and we don't have that yet. So we'll just live with what we got. Yeah, that's it.